The Frozen North, Episode 79, Wishful Thinking. Hello and welcome to episode number 79 of the Frozen North Wishful Thinking. My name is JJ and I'm here with my two friends, Mark. Howdy y'all! <laughs> I almost didn't do it. Yeah, I could tell. But uh, hey, he was busy playing with his magnet on his tablet. It's got a magnet yeah. on it. Is, mean, that, is that what keeps it from uh, freezing up or does it just freeze up on its own? Is that what keeps it from freezing up? Yeah, like when you have the magnet on Like if the magnet's on there, then yeah. it doesn't freeze. Correct. But as soon as I take the pin off, <laughs> then my tablet freezes. Yeah, because we've already established your tablet freezes constantly. True. Very true. It's not frozen. Well, that was good radio. I, it works. I showed that it wasn't. It wasn't frozen. For everybody uh, who's not here in this room, <laughs> when I said it freezes, he showed me and then did a whole "it's not frozen" thing, but didn't say narrate what he was doing. So dead air. <laughs> and Brian. Hi, I'm Brian. There's there's that deep intro. Yes. Oh, keeping it keeping there. it uh, real deep. Oh my, that's nope. Not gonna. Nah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> we need a sound effect for that kind of thing. Indiendo's just like wow. Uh, burp, 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 burp. Yeah, there you go. I like. Mm. No, I like the first one. Wow. Wow. <laughs> like a cat. I don't know what's happening right now. Uh, okay. Man, what have we been playing, guys? I'll start. JJ's looking at me. I'll, oh. s- I'll start because it's going to be a long list. So since we last recorded, since I last recorded, uh, I beat The Wolf Among Us, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, Lego Indiana Jones, The Original Adventures, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith, Sith Lords. I am currently playing Peace Walker on the PS3 um, in the uh, HD collection, and I am also knee-deep into Xenoblade Chronicles X and loving it. That's a list. It's definitely a list. Whew. Uh, I've pretty much just been playing, uh, well, a little bit of Trails in the Sky. I really, really like that game. Holy crap, it's good. And The Witcher 3. Big one. Nice. I, I cannot stand Geralt still as a character, but, man, that is, it's, seriously, Witcher 3 is hands down one of the best games I've ever played. That's pretty good. It really is. I've been playing, uh, well, I actually just beat Fallout 4. Hey, I beat a game, guys. I beat a game in the first. Oh! I beat a game in the first month of a year. You like rushed <laughs> to beat that too. I, well, I, like, did I though? You you rushed like uh, you got to a point. You're like, how far am I? And then I was like, you're about halfway. And you're like, what? Because <laughs> yeah. you were doing side stuff the entire time. Yeah, I couldn't stop. I kept building more yeah, settlements right. and, and to upgrading f- my guns. To be fair, you really wanted to start The Witcher Three too. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, so I finally beat Fallout Four with about eighty five hours in the game. Uh, however, oh. did I legitimately beat the game? Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. that yeah. Witcher 3 made me forget. Uh, I encountered a game-breaking bug in the second-to-last mission of the game. Ouch. Without giving away anything, I'll just say that I took a fusion core from an area you can get to earlier in the game, so it seems like it should be fine, but the second-to-last mission that I played requires me to remove a fusion core to shut down a machine. And the fusion core is just not there. The machine's running anyway. And there's nothing you can do. Oh, that sucks. Does anybody else find it ironic that Mark can't even beat a game without putting an asterisk next to it? I know. That's <laughs> I beat several <laughs> games without asterisks. But to be fair, that was Bethesda's fault. Not yeah, that was Mark. Bethesda's oh, yeah. fault. Uh, yeah. I was so decked out, I could have taken anything. I You were actually pretty bummed about that, too. I was. I, I legitimately felt bad for a few seconds. Uh, but... Uh, I, I did beat it. I used console commands to force complete that mission, and then I went to my final mission, and the cinematics of that one were completely messed up as well. Like, some dramatic scene looked completely oh, ridiculous geez. because of that. Uh, I can't really take you out of it, can you? Yeah. Yeah. It's but then I, I beat it. Nice. But, okay. I mean, you, you, I, I think you would agree that you still got your money's worth yeah. out of the game. I mean... It was one of those rare games like Mass Effect 2 and 3 where I didn't notice. I could play eight hours a day and not notice. Yeah. Usually, yeah. I can't do that. And you started Witcher 3, right? I did. What do you think? Uh, I like it a lot. There's some things that are annoying me. It does, 
just like the general control of uh, Geralt feels a little squishy, a little odd. Uh, I don't have so much con- like issues with the controls with him so much as I do the camera. That's what kind of that. bugs me is just the camera never seems to decide where it wants to be. Yeah. And it's a little annoying. And I've also had a few issues with some of the missions like where you have to defeat or you have to defend NPCs and they die in one hit. <laughs> That's kind of annoying. Yeah. I remember that mission too. In terms of like the characters, the voice acting and the main plot, I really like it though. And I like Geralt. Well, there you go. Yeah. I do too. And it, it we talked about it. Um, he's an anti-hero. Yeah. Uh, eh. Well, he's not supposed to be likable. You know what I mean? You're not supposed to like him because he's a nice guy. You're supposed to like him because he's an interesting character, right? You're not supposed to be like, I identify with his really cold and callous ways. <laughs> like, yeah. And I, in a way, I mean, it's not. These games aren't about saving the world. None no, of them no, are. No. And, th- and that's totally, and I completely acknowledge that's why I'm not a big fan of him, is because, I mean, look at the games that I do typically play. I play yeah. JRPGs where the hero is normally like some kid who uh, screws up a lot in school, but right. has a heart of gold. Right. You know, and it's like, going from that to this is, you know, but I, like I said, it's still one of the best games I've ever played. Yeah. And I think it's okay to not like Geralt. Like, JJ yeah. doesn't like him as a character. That that That's the thing about that game is he, Geralt's kind of not even... The main focal point. You're just, you're just his eyes throughout the world as the character. Right. Absolutely. And I, I agree. The thing I love about it too is like this is maybe going to be proven false as I go further into the game, but like the biggest thing happening in the world right now is there's a bunch of nations at war, thousands of people clashing, dying, and Geralt's not going to change that. Yeah. He's not going to stop the war or turn the tide of the war. He's doing his own thing. Yeah, and, and that just happens to be the backdrop. And he has no like uh, flights of fancy to think he can change it. He's yeah. like, I don't care about the war. The war is happening. I'm just a witcher looking for Siri. And that's very refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's cool, too. Mm-hmm. My my only, my biggest gripe with the game, though, is, and this this is very, very common in a lot of games that have the uh, the choices. And I told you guys about this. Like, when you've got, like, three options or something like so let's say you've got two options you're going you're talking to some guys in a bar and they say something that would make your character mad or no 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 no. they ask you where where a location is so where are you headed and the two options it gives you are you tell them where you're headed you say blah blah blah. and the second option is something like i'm sorry i can't divulge that yeah so you choose a second option just because you're like, you know what, I, I, I don't want to give myself away. And instead of saying, I'm sorry, I can't divulge that information, <laughs> Geralt comes over, no, and I'm going to kick your ass. And it's like, yeah. what? No. Those what? are those, <laughs> they, those, are those uh, false choice. Uh, I, think, I think they wanted you. I think because uh, I answered uh, the other opposite and you still fight them. Like, I think it's yeah. just one of those like, hey, here's a choice. And you still fight the guys. Like, it's just one of those. Like, Actually, I don't get it. Yeah. I, that was annoying. Uh, but I do like those confrontations. Yeah. Where you get confronted by a bunch of like low life, oh, low life thugs in the bar, and then you handle it wrong, and it just ends with you slaughtering them, and they <laughs> yeah, had they yeah. had no chance of defeating you, yeah. and there's just blood on the walls, and people <laughs> cut in half, and the the bartender who like you're trying to defend is rightfully mortified, and just like get the hell get out of here, out of my bar. Yeah. I I totally and I th- I think that's hilarious too. I just don't like how it misleads you on the yeah. answers. That yeah, you're giving. that's annoying. It is so. They even changed that in Fallout 4, I think, where instead of, like, they actually had a mod where you could put the actual what the character says. Yeah, there's says. a mod. But I'm, let me ask you this about Witcher 3, and then we'll move on. Um, doesn't this world feel the most lively of any world? Like, everybody's always, like, all the peasants are doing work. Honestly, um, when I'm not trying to interact with it, I would say, yes, it is the most uh, lively world I've right. ever been in. But when I walk up to NPCs and they just won't even interact with me in any way, it feels like a right. game. That's when you run into them because then they go, yeah. "Oh, watch where you're going! Watch where you're going!" Yeah, yeah. But I mean, just or, the, 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 like, the amount of the <laughs> amount of different things I saw like characters doing, and like I saw a lady like beating um, like leather, washing yeah. on a washboard, like just it feels like a po- impoverished, especially Velen. Yeah, it smells like holy crap. These people are in bad, bad way, like money. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I, I'm so I've been playing the game for so many hours already, and I'm still just in the like not the starting area, but the second zone. You're in Velen, yeah. It's ridiculous, yeah. dude. You, you, you beat a big arc in the story, but you're probably like a quarter of the way done. I kind of went out of my way just to like get as many of those uh, fast travel points uncovered as I could. That's good. Yeah. You'll need them. But there's a lot of scary monsters out there, especially yeah. especially in the biggest uh, the biggest 
area, the Skellige Islands. That's bi- oh, that's bi- the biggest. That's by far the biggest. It'll take wait. You, that's not the biggest. Oh, it'll take you about. 10 it doesn't minutes. look like the biggest. It's the based biggest on the land. size of the it, villages. It's the biggest land. It's the, the problem is it's they're all islands. And oh, sail from I one island you. to the I other. Been there. I had to sail from one point to another at one point because I didn't have the fast travel. It took me a, a legitimate ten minutes. <laughs> it's not the largest land mass, but it's the largest map area. It's the largest area. Yeah. Correct. So you'll want fast travel when you get to Skellige. Oh, man. All right. Well, we would like to hear from you guys, uh, listeners. We want to hear what you've been playing. Tell us about your gaming experiences. Tell us your top five lists, anything like that. And you know what? Don't don't tune out JJ here. Don't tune him out. Don't be like, let's get to the show. I don't want to hear about the stuff he reads every every episode. Do actually send us this stuff and tell us what you think, because I want to see it and have some sort of reaction to it. Wow. Mark just... Uh, you heard it here first, Ooh. folks. Mark would like to judge you harshly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, the last episode that we had, we had a handful of people submit some stuff, which That's was true. great. Yeah. I just think it's, you know... I, thank I, God, because I, I was by myself. I go through the uh, the motions on my show, and I'm like, I'm not even listening to myself right now, so I bet nobody's taking any note to... True, and that's kind of why I try to get through this part as, soon, as quick as possible. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. But... Our email address is frozennorthpodcast at gmail.com. Our website is fngaming.net. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash the frozen north. Our Twitter is at fnpodcast. Our blog is frozennorthpodcast.blogspot.com. We're also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash frozen north games. I uh, usually stream on Wednesday and Thursday nights between uh, 6 and 9 p.m. Uh, Central Time. And uh, we're on iTunes where we'd love for you to subscribe to and rate us on there. So, cool. All right, so um, actually, before we go into news, we do have a side quest. Speaking of which, that we're going to go into. Uh, it's from our buddy Isaac, our resident Xenoblade expert. Isaac, take it away. It's been almost three years since Xenoblade Chronicles X was first announced to the public during a Nintendo Direct in January 2013. When I first laid eyes on what was to become Xenoblade Chronicles X, I admired the then breathtaking visuals and the then amazing soundtrack. Marveled in the sense of scale that the first trailer showed, and was fascinated by the appearance of a blue-eyed blonde male at the end of the trailer who bore a startling resemblance to Shulk, the main character of the original Xenoblade Chronicles. By the time the second trailer showed up at E3 2013, my hype could no longer be contained. As an estimation, I would say I have seen that specific trailer at least 50 times. I watched countless explanations, trailer breakdowns, and even frame-by-frame analyses of the trailer. I was hyped for the game. It seemed to have everything the first game had. Amazing combat, a killer story, great graphics for the platform, and amazing music. I should have known, however. First impressions are not always what they initially seem. By the time E3 2014 came around and the character models were shown for the first time, I was disappointed. The faces looked like early PS2 renders of a distorted anime style. But I was not deterred. This was still going to be a great game. Graphics didn't matter that much. However, as the release date neared, all the way to E3 2015, a sense of burgeoning dread seemed to overtake the hype I had sensed earlier. The trailer at E3 failed to impress, and soon the game was awash in controversy over the censorship of certain revealing outfits belonging to a young member of the cast. It was then that the hype truly began to die. I have always loved how the original Xenoblade invited the best elements of Western game design and storytelling, how it made the best out of the annoying tropes that often define elements of Japanese gaming. Content like that wasn't supposed to be in a game like this. This wasn't supposed to be a game that had to be censored, a game which shared elements of that darker, terrible side of the internet which lurks in the back alleys and slums of sites like Reddit and 4chan. But I digress. I installed the data packs and patiently waited the game's release on December 4th, and patient I would have to be. I did finally receive the game in the mail, albeit three days late on December 7th. It was then that I would find out that all the worries I had regarding the game had been warranted. I played the game for 12 hours and until the end of chapter 5. Those 12 hours were some of the longest I have ever spent playing a video game. For 12 hours I wandered around, waiting, trying to sense when the hook was going to set in. When would I start to enjoy the game? This game was supposed to be my automatic game of the year. An easy 150 to 200 hour black hole from which my time should have never recovered. Instead, the game was in a padded envelope. What happened? What disdain did I hold for this game to buy it new and then resell it for 75% of what I paid for it mere weeks later? How can a game with a Metacritic score of 84 be so poor? The story is principally the main problem with the game. In terms of how gripping the first hour is, I would put it on the level of your average 2D Mario game. 
At no point in the first hour did I ever think the story was gripping or interesting. Instead of trying to provoke any sort of excitement, the story relies instead upon huge information dumps, profanity for the sake of Western tastes, poorly localized and tedious jokes, and a forced sense of progression to shove the plodding quagmire of proper nouns called a story forward. Tetsuya Takahashi, creator of the Xeno series, was quoted as having focused more on the gameplay in this installment. I understand the need for extra time and the crushing deadlines which lay underneath the, the creation of HD games, but not once did the story seem to be planned further than a rough draft scribbled on the back of a napkin. Annoying characters who were poorly voice acted did not help either. Some games with lethargic main plots can be saved by their characters. One need look no further than the last story for evidence of that. After an hour of ridiculous parodies of anime tropes pantomiming a story together, however, I was ready to call it quits. In fact, one might be even willing to say that the first hour of the story was the best. I will leave the remainder of my experience with the initial twelve hours to rest, however, as this horse needs no more beatings. Music was a toss-up. If one comes to this game expecting any sort of coherent musical composition, neatly knitted together to form a cohesive experience, they will be truly mistaken. That is not to say the music is bad, but some pieces would feel more at home in the streets of Akihabara than in an alien world. They feel directly ripped from an anime. However, given the composer, Hiroyuki Sawano, and his previous work, I feel this was to be expected. I beg to question Takahashi's choice of composer, though. After all, passing up on Yoko Shimamura as the composer for a JRPG seems paramount to Star Wars without John Williams and The Dark Knight without Hans Zimmer. Unnatural. Honestly, despite the complete lack of any sort of story, battling in Xenoblade Chronicles X was a mostly fun experience, which improved on Xenoblade's gameplay while providing incentive for grinding. And grind you shall. The other pillar to my disappointment in this game is just how grindy the game truly is. Every quest is a grind. The disastrous story quests are locked behind a grind. And even character development is locked behind a grind. I get that Monolith Soft's obsession with MMOs has been mostly positive, but I cannot shake the feeling that this game went one step too far. I accept the grindy nature of games like Final Fantasy XIV, an MMORPG. The relic weapons in XIV can take hundreds of hours to get. However, those hundreds of hours are spent with other people, friends, guildmates, and for some, a significant other. The nature of the grind in XIV is to bring people together, and not to drive them apart. However, in Xenoblade, the grind has room for only one, and it becomes an all-consuming void which absorbs vast amounts of time for very little reward. And it's a crying shame, too. The world in Xenoblade Chronicles X is truly amazing and alive. It breathes with the player and invites them to explore it, to immerse themselves in it, to become a part of it, at every avenue where immersion would kick in. However, the game would throw me out with either a terribly planned cutscene or by just how grindy it is. The beauty and vistas of the world are incredible. I have never seen more incredible views outside of an MMO. And to say that this is on the Wii U is a testament to how well the engineers at Monolith Soft know the ins and outs of the Wii U's ancient PowerPC architecture. However, as a fan of Nintendo ever since my younger years, and a sampler of JRPG since then, I can say that this is by far the most disappointing and regrettable game I have ever played with the word Nintendo on the bottom right of the box art. In almost every way, this game is outclassed by its forefather. In every way does it fail to bear the weight of the Xenoblade subseries. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of Final Fantasy XIII. On the surface, a bright, beautiful low 80 score on Metacritic. But beneath, a bubbling cauldron of problems which threaten to tear apart the community united by previous games in the series. As someone who really enjoyed XIII, my dislike of Xenoblade Chronicles X can be said to be more or less a sort of situational irony. In the end, to anyone looking to get a Wii U for this game, I say, save your money. If this is the only game you want to play on the Wii U, you are better off spending that money somewhere else, as nearly every other Nintendo published game on the Wii U outclasses it. Whew! Harsh words. Damn. Harsh words from, uh, from, a, from a Xenoblade fan. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and assume Isaac was not a fan of the new one? Yeah. Sounds like Surprising. It. Well, not, I wouldn't say surprising, but um, yeah. I I mean as as much as I enjoyed like listening to him talk about that and kind of getting his take on it everything like that I have to say and I told him this already I pretty much disagree with like almost everything yeah. in there I'm like f- f- like 23 hours in I think and I don't it doesn't feel like that at all uh, all I want to do I just got my skill mm-hmm. all I want to do is go back and start exploring more and use my really powerful skill to kill everything 
Just wait to get a party of them. Oh, oh God, it is awesome. And it, then wait, you get, wait till you get to fly with them. And, and then there's like little flavor things too, like the cockpit views when you're in the scale, where you're like showing shows your character inside the like little cockpit screen, and yep. you get all your cooldowns removed, and you ah oh, just I just want to play it right now. I agree. I let's start with what what we agree with them. Sure. On. The because I think you and I feel the same way about this game pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, but the uh, the music very hit or miss. It's it's kind of like. Like, the music in the first game was spectacular. It really was. Yeah. It was absolutely gorgeous. This one, they kind of pulled a Final Fantasy thirteen. They added vocals in yep. and tried to kind of... Uh, I don't I don't even know how to explain it, but some of it is just really awkward and just does not fit. When you're in New L.A., Ugh, the music yeah. that's there is awful. I've tuned it out to this it point. It really is. The, the music in this game, I would say, is either, either exceptionally good or exceptionally bad. So it's pretty much like an average soundtrack because you get such good music in some areas, but then you're just like, "What is happening right now?" Yeah, it's kind of like when you when you, well, I mean, I don't know that people buy CDs really anymore, right. but when you used to buy CDs back mm-hmm. in the day, you'd buy an album and you only bought it because you wanted to hear like two or three songs on it. That's kind of how this is, yeah, because those songs are really that good that mm-hmm. you're willing to pay money for the entire album. Yeah. As far as the gameplay goes, again, he you know he said the gameplay was great and everything like that. I mean, that's the best part in my opinion. Yes. Uh, the exploration spectacular. It is. It's hard to believe this game is on the Wii U. I can't believe it. By the way it looks and the way it plays, the size of the freaking world. And the creatures. Yeah. Massive and, well, massive too tiny. Yeah. I mean, they're all over the place. Yeah, you got little bugs all the way up to uh, creatures that I didn't think you could render in real time on the screen. It, the whole entire, and everything's seamless too. Yeah. Um, what's cool is, and like, because I wanted to test this as soon as I got it, but and this isn't a spoiler, but once I got flight for my skills, mm-hmm. you can actually fly into New L.A. if you want to, like over the top of the walls and stuff. You don't uh, have to go through the gates. You just fly in from outside. It's that, so cool seeing the city from up top. That is really cool. So, I mean, that, the the way it looks, and like, it, like I mentioned this to you before, awe-inspiring, I think, yeah. is the, the best way to describe this game uh, as far as the way it looks and, and what you're seeing there. Now... As far as it being grindy, now, I've beaten the game. I've beaten the, the main storyline and everything. I didn't really think it was grindy up until the later chapters when you have to grind. Sure. Because, A, it gates content for you. Right. You have to do certain affinity missions to move on right. with, with the rest of it, which are their side quests, basically. Um, and in your case, I think you'll be fine because you're doing that stuff anyways. Mm-hmm. I did not. I was just like, you know, I really want to kind of go with the main story, keep going. And I, I did affinity missions for the characters I was using. Right. Um, but I didn't use everybody. Yeah. So I kind of like left some of them on the wayside. Once you get to the to the later chapters, all of a sudden you're it's like, okay, you're going to need to have this. You're going to have to have these higher level skills, which cost ridiculous amounts of money, like millions. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, if you... I I had a I I had issues with running in head first into battles a lot, so I damaged my skills quite a bit. Right, um, ended up having to pay to repair them quite a bit, so I lost a lot of money. You ran in out of insurance? Yeah, you only have three uh, for each scale or for in general for each scale. Gotcha. The cool thing is though, if your party members have insurance on there, though those will never run out. Gotcha. So you're the only one that can really use those insurance, um, which is which is good. But uh, eventually, yeah, I mean, it, and it costs like three quarters of what you paid for it to, to repair it, which is, you know, pretty pricey. Yeah. Um, especially when you get the level 50 scales when they cost like three to four million a piece. Right. But I don't know. It, was just, it, it seemed like it was it was worth it in the end, even though, yeah, I did have to grind all these side quests and do all the side stuff and get a ton of money and everything like that. It, the only reason I felt it was because I was doing it for so long. But the gameplay is so good yeah. that initially, at least for the, I'd say for the first three quarters of the game, you don't really notice it. That that's kind of where I, I, you know, there are differences between, between like you grind in Skyrim. People don't realize it, but you do grind in Skyrim. But you're doing something while you're grinding, right? Like so in Xenoblade. So I disagree with it's it's grindy. I I, I what I'm doing is uh, I'm doing a story mission, and then I'm doing everything I can. Uh, I'm doing side quests, and uh, I'm not doing the board, but I'm doing side quests and affinity missions until I'm locked out, because uh, a lot of the affinity mi- missions have like certain uh, requirements, like getting past chapter this or chapter this. So I'm doing everything I can before I move on with a story mission, and it's really fleshing out the world to me. And I'm, I'm just, I wish Isaac, if you if you ever if you ever get the chance, play more of the game. 
um, than, than what you did because I just got past to where you said you stopped in the story just opens up with like intrigue right after chapter five. And you're like, whoa. And doing those infinity, it's very, the way they do the story, it seemed bare bones. Um, but the way they do it is it's segmented story with the affinity missions where it flushes out your characters, what their jobs are and what they have to do with the world. And it makes the world seem more, more alive. So I, I just, in every aspect, this game is better than Xenoblade Chronicles. The first one, um, except for, uh, obviously the, uh, the the soundtrack and the I would say uh, coherent like you know point A to point B story, uh, but see I even didn't like the story that much in Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the cast in yeah. Xenoblade Chronicles either. Yeah. Um, granted, I think they were a little more fleshed out as well. Sure. Mainly because you didn't have to do side stuff in order right. to get to know them. Right. They right, were right. all part of the main main line. Um, in this game, you if you want to get to know them, you pretty much have to do side stuff. Sure. But. <sighs> I don't know. I I agree. I think I think this one just outclasses the first one in every way imaginable. Yeah. It's the Skyrim of JRPGs, is what I've called it, because it's it encourages it. Literally, the whole world's open. Uh, there was one point where I got had an affinity mission where I had to go to uh, what's the the northern continent, um, Caldros, Caldros, and, and Tamaria, not Caldros, the one right below it, the one with Silvalon. Sil- 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 yeah, I was like, uh, how how do I get there? Like. So I had to do some exploring, and I found a little land bridge that was kind of like a, a smattering of like little islands I to get to swim it. too. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. Like the whole world's open for you to, to explore. The only thing that yeah. blocks you are giant creatures that'll eat you. That is amazing. <laughs> the, you know how games will like lock out areas, like GTA does it, where when you first start, oh, you can't go across the bridge; it's being worked on. No, well, there are some of those in this game. Really, you like the edges of the map. The world is not round. Gotcha. <laughs> you can't go from one end to the other. I, I'm just saying, like whatever. I'm just saying, like all the all the continents are open right from oh, the start. You yeah. can go there and just be careful of getting eaten by giant. Oh, there there are missions that will send you to places where stuff is way higher level, and, and you, you, have, you to, have to figure out how to get around it's it. It's so yeah. so brilliant. I love it. Yeah, and that's all I'll say. I lo- I am loving Xenoblade. It's probably going to be uh, where, where it sits now. My favorite JRPG of all time. Wow. Yeah. That's whoo. It's definitely, def- I think it's definitely, like its predecessor was on the Wii, I think this is the best game on the Wii U, uh, at least for me. Yeah, I absolutely adore it. I yeah, we're, it's fantastic. we're simpatico here. So, Isaac, thank you, though, very much. Uh, I mean, it's still interesting to hear, and, and you know what? He's not the only one that feels that way. There are a lot of people who, who would rather have a more story-focused yeah. uh, game, because this one definitely did focus on the gameplay, and the creators did say that. They yep. were like, you know, we're, we're going to... If we make another one, that one will be back to yeah. what the first one did. His his opinion's not invalid. He wanted Xenoblade no. Chronicles, and it, well, it's not. It's got the same name, but it's not the same game. Right. I know um, that feeling. Yeah. Like what happened with uh, Sweet Coden when they went to the DS. Right. They created a whole new storyline, a different world, everything. Maybe that game so, was good, I guess, but I got too frustrated to finish. I guess if you're listening, Isaac, if you ever... I, I know you don't want to play it again, and it's totally cool, but if you ever do, give it a different name. Call it... JRPG Wii U and, and play it. Play it <laughs> knowing that it's not Xenoblade Chronicles, and just play it as a JRPG on the Wii U. And don't don't try to put it side by side with the original one. I think you'll have a more uh, you know uh, a better time with it. Because I think that's essentially how I finished Final Fantasy Thirteen. Yeah, you were like, okay, this is not Final Fantasy. I'm just yeah. gonna play it as a game called uh, uh, Hallways. And that was <laughs> no, I mean, and that's that's actually what brought this whole thing up. Him and I were talking about it, and he was, you know, telling me how much he disliked it and everything. And I was like, okay, well, this is the, you know, what you're experiencing with this is exactly how I feel about Final Fantasy Thirteen. How a lot of fans of the series sure. feel that way because it was such a departure from the original one. Right. It's just, I don't know. I I finished Thirteen, and afterwards, I kind of had that exact opinion, exactly what you're saying. You know, I had to look at it like. I think it's a good game, right. but not as a Final Fantasy title. That's exactly right. So, and that's kind of how you have to have to. I think I think if you do what Brian says and just don't treat it like a Xenoblade game and play it, you know, in your opinion, you might it might change and be like, you know what, I think it's a really good game, just not a good Xenoblade title. Correct. So, but you've only got one other title to go off of, right? So it's not like it's you really not have as a huge comparison. It's not as big a departure as I'm sure Final Fantasy fans felt when they played 13. Yeah, that's for like, sure. Well, we had 12 games before this <laughs> yeah, that uh, were exactly the same, and this one's a uh, bastardization. Yeah, yeah, yep. What do you think, Mark? 
Uh, I think uh, if you don't like it, you shouldn't play it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, like, if you Absolutely. ever if you ever feel no. like you want to give it another go, just don't look at it as a Xenoblade title. Just look that's, at it as... And that's what Brian's saying. He's not... like. Yeah. He, he, I, I think Brian would agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't like it, don't, don't play, play it. it. But if you're only not playing it because you don't think it's a good Xenoblade title, yeah. that's not a reason not to play it. Right. Because it is still a solid game. And that, that was the that was the whole hang up with thirteen. It's got good Metacritic scores. It's a good game. That's why I finished it. It's just not a Final Fantasy yeah, game. Well, I don't know if it was a good game. I mean, it was a good TV show. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, it it, it was uh, it, definitely less interactive than most games. Um, but uh, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my journey playing it. I, but I totally get that it wasn't a Final Fantasy game because it wasn't. Yeah, I have different opinions but that's not what we're here to talk about no. today yeah we could go on for hours <laughs> mark maybe you should do a side quest one day about final <laughs> fantasy 13 <laughs> your opinion on it <laughs> you have to beat the game first oh, oh I'm kidding, I'm kidding, impossible I'm <laughs> well you don't have uh you know 40 hours to sit I, down and watch I, a movie i don't have infinite patience <laughs> All right, um, but yeah, we. I mean, what Isaac did there, sending in that that side quest, anybody can do that. So just send us, just record yourself, talk about anything. Um, actually, I won't talk about this too much now because we're going to get into it a little bit later. But uh, yeah. we want people to get involved. Yeah, Frozen North Podcast at Gmail dot com. Just send us your thoughts. You guys are way more interesting than we are. Amen to that, Brian. What do we have for news this week? All right, guys, news. Boop, boop, boop news okay um oculus rift got announced for 600 buck hooray oh oh my god bbq <laughs> uh so rift was the first uh oculus hey, ho, ho. 599 dollars that's usd um yeah the first official vr price announcements did come from um the rift it sent vibrations through the internet to put it lightly um and it is set to ship in march yeah, we still I ordered it. Yeah, we haven't heard from the Vive or the PlayStation VR uh, yet, and we're expecting to hear yeah. that soon. Uh, you can expect that it'll be comparable. Um, I, I would be very surprised if it was not. Someone asked, uh, I think it was the head of um, marketing at Vive, at HTC, how much the Vive was going to cost if they had any reflection on the reveal of the Oculus price point, and they said something along the lines of, we believe you'll be satisfied with your investment. <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> that yeah. tells you. Yep. Uh, and and thing like, it's like buying a TV. So six hundred bucks for a TV, and it comes with a ton of stuff too. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure, you know, it costs twelve hundred dollars, but if you've got it for twenty years, you know, that's not that much over time if oh, you think no. about it. So that's, <laughs> that's basically what they're saying. Okay. Okay. Well, we can expect comparable pricing to come out soon. Uh, VR is officially coming. I think it'll be this around year. the same. Yeah. Yeah. So we're excited. Uh, I'm going to try marks out, and in a couple of years, I'll probably be uh, diving into the yeah. VR market. So, I'm definitely making a mistake buying it, but it's a mistake I'm happy. Hey, you're make. a beta tester; it's fine. Yeah, yeah. You've you've been on the fence for years about getting a dev kit anyway, so that's I true. Think, I think you 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 owe it to yourself to just pull the trigger. I do. And do I it. do. Yeah. I I deserve a little treat. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. All right. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 also announced officially for 2016. Chew on some of these Hijime Tabata quotes. This is what he has said. Uh, we will finally release Final Fantasy XV this year in 2016. In development, previous phases required wisdom and strength. God, Japanese. <laughs> However, <laughs> moving forward, the final phase will focus on uh, effort and willpower. Oh, God. I didn't actually read the end of that. Okay, Those so are subtitles and, for the new... Yeah, love and friendship will <laughs> the new prevail. Default. Yeah. Bravely um, default, effort and willpower. So to, more, from, more from Tabata, and this kind of gives me a little bit of uh, hope. Um... He says, I vow to you that every member of in the team will do their best uh, to the very last possible moment, taking responsibility and pride in their craft. We will do everything we can to finish Final Fantasy XV to create an experience we are incredibly proud of and one that you will enjoy and treasure. The whole Final Fantasy XV team appreciates all of your support from each and every one of you this past year. I cannot tell you how much it means to all of us. So he he's proud. The new Nintendo. There's, there's a... Uh kind of a little sidetrack here okay but there's a, another podcast i listen to called ultima final fantasy if you're a final fantasy fan you should go check them out because they i mean the name says it all they talk only about final fantasy games spinoffs all that stuff they did a uh, a spoof on uh that song from the lion king hakuna matata yeah and they changed the words to be <laughs> <laughs> <Hajime> <laughs> Tabata. Tabata. 
It's pretty darn funny. The G made Tabata. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and they like made a whole song with it. It's pretty That's good. Right. Ultima Final Fantasy. Go check them out. Uh, another announcement we're all excited for uh, is the uh, new Nintendo console. Um, it's rumored to be announced in June and released in the fall of 2016. So they're moving quick on this. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, they're moving quick on this. Good thing I didn't buy a Wii U. Uh, a lot of speculation. Um, we might have some correspondence at E3 this year uh, that they might uh, Nintendo might kind of throw back the uh, clock a little bit and actually do some uh, E3 reveals rather than their Nintendo Directs that are parallel to E3. Um, uh, although there is a rumor I ha- heard that they're going to try to announce before E3. To That's what I heard. Steal too. some thunder. Yeah. Um, from and maybe have like working NXs at E3. Hopefully. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Could uh, be there. Maybe. Maybe, maybe no. 50-50, Mark. 50-50. That's right. So, I'm... I'm. Should I be mad if the NX comes out and it's backwards compatible with the Wii U? Because I just bought a Wii. <laughs> what I, well, should I be mad or should I just be like, eh? You know what? I don't think you should be mad because let's say it is. Yeah. If there's a game like Xenoblade Chronicles for it. Yeah. Or, I mean, it, let's say you want to pop in Xenoblade Chronicles to that. Unless it has that tablet you're not going to be able to use the tablet features. And the tablet features That's on Xenoblade true. Chronicles are phenomenal. That's true. What if it's tablet compatible and backwards compatible? Then can I be mad? Like and, with... Then yes, you can be mad. Damn it. You want to. But everyone else should be happy yeah. if that's the case. Yeah, I'll be, I will, I'll be disappointed that they, they didn't like warn Wii U people, but I would get it business strategy-wise. But I, yeah. I would be happy overall because uh, Nintendo's, <laughs> Nintendo's always been a good company about being backwards compatible. Um, so I feel like they're going to try to do the same. Uh, with the NX, but I don't know. I will see. No one's ever going to say, if you were thinking about buying our console, you might want to hold off. Right. No one's ever going right. to say that. No, you're right. You're right. Like I said, I'll be, I'd be disappointed that I bought a Wii U so close to the NX, but anyway, I digress. Uh, oh, and uh, Mark, this will be a fun story for you. Assassin's Creed may be slowing down as a franchise. Good. Uh, Mark has been a very vocal advocate that Ubisoft sucks and he hates everyone at Ubisoft. No. Whoa. <laughs> no. Wow. That's not true. No, he, Mark has uh, criticized the uh, the oversaturation of Assassin's Creed games, and I think maybe Ubisoft. And is... I famously have my policy of playing the second game from every series right. they make. Uh, but rumor has it that uh, Ubisoft is putting Assassin's Creed on a slower release trajectory, as the next one is rumored to skip over 2016 and uh, be released in 2017, which is a departure from the yearly um, chapters we get in that uh, series, and uh, maybe a uh, sign that they're going to be slowing down on that and uh, moving on to something else. Is it good for the series? Is the it division. bad for the series? What What's your opinion on this, Mark? Uh, whatever your opinion is, it's wrong. <sighs> Ouch. I think that's definitely what they need to do. Yeah. They need to have like larger feature improvements yes. between each title. And are they starting to run out of like interesting settings now? Probably. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. They they've been saving like feudal Japan, I guess. Yeah, they could go there at some point. That'll be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And then the last story is uh, um, it's a little bit older. You probably all know about it, but uh, I just want to talk about it here real quick. Uh, Hideo Kojima and Sony struck a partnership, and we'll be de- uh, we'll be developing a game for exclusive purposes uh, for the PlayStation. Thought that was a big get for Sony. Um, oh yeah, that's huge. Yeah, so uh, Microsoft should have like given them hundreds of gold, millions of dollars. Gold. It's dumb yeah. gold. Um, I think that I mean I think that's a really uh, it was a really good coup for Sony to uh, put a big name. Um, they already have such good studios with like Naughty Dog and yeah. Um, to had add Hideo, Hideo Kojima uh, to their like repertoire of um, uh, studios, it's uh, well he doesn't work for them. He's got like a publishing agreement, doesn't he? Yeah, he his studio is going to develop for Sony. Yeah, that and that's basically what Naughty Dog does. It's uh, basically uh, yeah, they, they grabbed a, a studio that they, they grabbed Kojima Studios and was like, hey, you want to work with us exclusively? And he said, exclusive. So Solid. good gift for Sony. I applaud them. Uh, they just keep. They seem to just keep making all the right moves, man. It's crazy. They're just. They keep pulling ahead in this race that they're like lapped. They've lapped everybody, and they're just like, we're just going to keep going. We're going to keep our feet on the the go mode and go. Maybe eventually they can catch up to PC. Yeah, maybe eventually they can. Give me this. <laughs> High five. High five. But uh, go Sony. Good job. Way to go. And that's your news. For this year, 2016. That's all the news you're getting. <laughs> Frozen North, no more news. Uh, the world is officially at a standstill until we talk to you about news again. So with that, <laughs> this is Brian signing off with news. All right. Top five for the week. 
we're going to be doing our top five wishful thinking games. Mark, what do we mean by wishful thinking games? By wishful thinking, we mean we really want more games from this series to exist, even though they probably won't. Ever. Is that not, satisfying? Well, not, not necessarily even though they probably won't, but we just don't see, we haven't heard or seen yeah. anything yeah. about it. I mean, who knows? Most of these, you're probably right. Yeah. Won't happen. But I think, like, like my number five, I think, has probably got a good chance of... Yeah, that's eventually. probably going to happen. Yep. Uh, why don't we go honorable mentions? Anybody? Um, I don't know. I can't think off the <laughs> top of my head. Well, you have a lot of my honorable mentions on your lists. Perfect Dark, because I'm that was going to be my number five. So Perfect Dark is an honorable mention for me. Solid. Solid. Okay. There you go. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. I'd like to see another Brave Fencer Musashi game. Yeah. Any of you guys have played that? I've played it a little bit. It's really, really good. It's fantastic. It's really hard to find now, too. Super expensive because they, for some reason, won't release it on Virtual Console. Oh, that's or, nice. Or uh, PS Store, whatever it is. Speaking of that, Bayonetta also just went out of print for Nintendo. Thanks, Nintendo. I went to look at Amazon prices, and they're $100 for Bayonetta 2 for the oh Wii U. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what? what? <laughs> it's, you still, it's, your con, it's your, still your, like... Primary console. Why are you discontinuing games, Nintendo? Which is really funny because they just put her into uh, Smash Brothers. Yeah, <laughs> I can't find it anywhere. And I looked on Amazon and I was like, "Wait, what is happening right now?" Interesting. Yeah. So you didn't pick it up? I, I'm gonna go look for it at Best Buy and GameStop over here today. Um, and if not, I might just have to, you know, hope and pray. I find it at like Vintage Stock someday. Yeah. I'm not well, paying a hundred bucks for it. Yeah. yeah. I don't blame you. All right. Well, let's just get right into it then. You know what? I'll start. I don't mm-hmm. think I've started in a while. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. yeah. Ooh, Ooh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> My number five wishful thinking game, and again, these are games that we would love to see another entry in the series or sequel or something. We just don't have any info to lead us to believe that's going to happen anytime soon. So. My number five is Red Dead Redemption. Nice. nice. Fantastic game. What it is. Absolutely wonderful. What a fun game. I uh, I just really love the. I mean, Grand Theft Auto is so much fun, but when you throw that into the old West, dude. I mean, this game was just so. It was ahead of its time, to be honest with you. Uh, the, all the things you could do, <laughs> the stuff you could do with the horse. Uh, it was just. I just made it sound dirty, but I mean, like, <laughs> that's not what I meant. <laughs> what I'm hearing is you didn't get enough of trying to find John Marston's wife and kids. Uh, pretty much, yeah. That's what it was. You can't get any more, though, technically. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> um, but, like, no, I mean, you could, you could drag people behind on your horse and stuff like that is what I, yeah. what I was thinking of when I said that. And tie them to railroad tracks. Tie them to railroad tracks, absolutely. But, I mean, like, you're, you're running around. You're able to just explore this huge open western world. Um, and it's just a whole lot of fun. Red Dead Redemption, my number five. Yeah, solid choice. Nice. Mark, go ahead. My number five, which I changed just yesterday, I guess, is... I don't know why you announced that. Like, I have did to. Did anybody know Yes, because Mark it just happened. Else? It just happened. Does That's it, why it's important. Did anyone know no, at Nobody all. would know but no, you. No, this is actually... Like, episode one, you did this. Because I remember making the joke, like, contrary to what may have leaked to the press. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Mark has changed the number on his top five. But this is, like, breaking news. Gotcha. So, I don't think that's true. It is breaking news <laughs> to someone. <laughs> <laughs> Little Bill. <Go ahead>. <laughs> I put Half Life 2 at number five because Mark Laidlaw just revealed that he has retired from the company. If you're not familiar with that name, he was the original writer that they hired to create a story for Half Life when at, at the time it was just a bunch of gameplay and no plot to stream it all together. And he's been at the helm ever since. And now he's gone. Yeah. So Half Life Three confirmed. Half <laughs> Half Life Three. They were at one point working on it, but they've refused to comment on it for years and years. And now this just feels like it's sort of like a final nail in the coffin. Yeah. And it's disappointing. Yeah. When I heard the news, I was like, "Oh well, I guess there goes all the Half Life Three confirmed jokes." Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm sure somebody will squeak those out. Yeah. All right. There you go. Mark's number five, Half-Life. All right. My number five is uh, a, cri- a new Crisis game. I loved the original Crisis. Uh, the original Crisis was the game that made me start building computers. Because I had a... When the first game came out, I had a like a stock Dell uh, computer that I used for college. 
just sitting there and I, crisis came out and when I loaded it up, everything was on low settings. <laughs> nice. And I was like, well, this sucks. Cause I seen screenshots. So, um, Christ, the first crisis game was the first game that pushed me to, I learned about overclocking. Um, I learned about building a computer all to play this one game. Uh, so this really fostered my love for, uh, um, I guess in our speak, Mark ascending as a brother. Yeah. Um, because you became I wanted PC masterful. Yeah. I, uh, I had, I, that was the first time I started doing benchmarks cause I wanted the, the full crisis experience. Right. Uh, at the time when the game first released, that would like cost me $4,000, uh, cause the, it was pushing even the best computers in the world. So I had to settle for on high settings and not ultra, but it was still a fantastic game. I loved the visuals. I loved the sneaking around and, uh, the Koreans. Yes. Uh, Okay. No, it was a really good game. Yeah, very beautiful game. Um, and uh, I just it's on here because I, I, even if that series just takes a weird turn, it did, it did stuff. How long ago was that? Now, uh, two thousand six or wow. seven. It did stuff nine or ten years ago that modern engines still don't even do. Exactly, like, like leaves bending back, being able to shoot trees down, stuff like that that yep. they don't bother with because it's just too taxing. Exactly, it was the the game where I was like, oh my god, this is what games are capable of, and and it fostered my love for. Uh, making a, a gaming rig. So I, I'll ever, forever love crisis for, um, being the benchmark to what computers aspired to be. And you're right. It was 2007 or six that it came out. And if you think about that, you're like, Oh, that was almost 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty cool crisis. Uh, I want to well, see another game. Number four. My number four is wild arms. There was a, a rumor a couple of years ago that Sony was in the works, um, of, uh, getting a new wild arms game out. I have not heard anything in a few years about it. Uh, I honestly have liked every single game in the series that I've played really, really great, uh, Western style JRPG. And, uh, especially the first one, the first one hands down is, is the best in the series. Um, still is to this day. And if you haven't played it, it is just a wonderful, wonderful piece of gaming history, especially for the old PS one. It's fantastic. Uh, so that's my number four wild arms, wild arms, number four would love to see another one. My number four is Mega Man Legends. Raise your hands if you've played Mega Man Legends. It's on my two. What? It's on my two play. <laughs> Neither of you have played Mega Man Legends. Nope. Uh, I mean, it's like a classic action adventure Mega Man game, but it came out really early in the the era of 3D gaming. So it definitely shows its age. It's very, <laughs> in some places, difficult to play. But just the, I don't know, there's a way that they characterize worlds and characters and mm-hmm. stuff in Mega Man that I love. And I think where gaming power has gone today, I think it's time for them to go back to the series. They can have massive environments oh, now. Yeah. The boss battles could be even more absurd. Because this is like one of the early games of dealing with like l- large mechs. They're like the size of a house or something. You can like climb fighting on you. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I, just, I think the technology's there now to do another one. Interesting. Yeah, bring it back, guys. Um, that was Mark's number four. My number four is uh, Metroid Prime or Metroid Proper uh, game. I don't count the Freedom Force thing that's coming out. Um, it's it's kind of just like multiplayer, some other crapshoot for the 3DS. Um, but uh, I just, those games are so good. Uh, Metroid Prime, um, I would put up there with uh, some of the best first-person shooters. Um, it was so ahead of its time, too. Um, but- it... it kept the metroid um what's the word i'm looking for it kept the metroid uh, essence but put it in a new uh perspective but aren't they making metroid prime hunters what no the one for 3ds is what he's talking about oh that's uh, no that's called uh, federation force or something like that it's not uh, it's not a proper isn't that what you're talking about i don't know what you're talking i don't about. know i'm talking about that new Weird looking the 3DS one. Yeah, right? it's, yeah, it's they're making another game. No, it's the, like not. sports type one. Yeah, it's like a sports, yeah. It's like it's a competitive. Really. It counts. It would be like if I said, oh, no. hold, on. "Hold on, there's." Hold I just on. want so, quite a few petitions online. I just want someone else's pick to be disputed hold on. for once. It would, it would be like, do you agree that Mario Tennis is not a Mario game? No, it has Mario in the title, so it's a it's a proper <laughs> Mario game. Yeah, <laughs> he's just shaking his head right now, Mark. I just want no. I just want someone else to be wrong for once. I mean, technically, yes, they are creating another game in the Metroid <laughs> universe, but it is going to be like a a sports or esport type. All right, Brian. Brian, yeah. I can give Brian crap on his number three, so we'll see. 
Ooh. All right, perfect. Can you? Absolutely. Okay, I, I can't wait. This is going to be fun. So my number three is Lunar. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, really, really great series. Uh, well, series, there's two main games in it. Uh, Lunar 1 and 2, but I mean, these two define just fun adventure. Um, really, really well written, simple story, you know, beat the dragon, save the princess. But it's like, it's cute and it's quirky and like, just a just a wonderful little game. Likeable characters. Which one have you played? Uh, I played some of the PlayStation re-release. Wait, like, was it one or two though? Because they were both released. Complete? Uh, oh, Silver Star Story. Complete? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the first one. Okay. Um, yeah, they're they're both both just really really great games, uh, and I would love to see a new one. They had they had a couple of spinoffs and uh, like re- remakes on some of the other consoles, but nothing like not a new entry in the series, and I, that's kind of what I'm uh, hoping for. But uh, we'll see. All right, my number three, Lunar. Nice. My number three. Oh, jeez. You know what? I'm just kidding. Huh. <laughs> my number three is L.A. Noir. Did anyone play it? Anyone play L.A. Noir? No. Nope. What? Uh, I beat it. Yeah. Oh, you beat it? Good. You love it? Did you love it? I didn't love it, but I thought it was a really. Uh, I thought it was a really good foray into that te- facial like, uh, reading technology. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely flaws in the game. That's true. Um, but no other game that I can think of has handled investigating crimes as well as this game. I mean, not a lot of games try anyway, but the amount of like granular detail that is existing in the world. Yes. That you can all the little red herrings, everything that's there to distract you, trying to sort out the meaningful clues from the clues that don't mean anything. That alone was just incredible to me. That was interesting. Something just fell. Our studio is falling apart, ladies and gentlemen. I blame Mark. I blame just me. Just keep it going, guys. Keep uh, it going. <laughs> it's fine. I think it was the headphone thing. Yeah. Um, in that, I, I haven't even gotten to the facial animations. This was a game that used incredibly sophisticated motion capture for faces. Yep. And so you could actually interrogate people and watch their reactions and you get, usually tell if they're lying you get or lying not. cues or tells when people yeah. are lying. It was really fun. Exactly. And unfortunately, after it came out, uh, it was pretty popular. When it came out, I like I liked it, but some stuff happened with like paying overtime and stuff like that, and lawsuits after that, and the company no longer exists. Mm-hmm. The guys that made it, and uh, Rockstar now owns the rights to it. Well, they published it, would, right? Rockstar, they, published yeah, it. they published yeah. and actually helped a little bit. Gotcha. Uh, I'd love to see another one. I think it would be awesome. I really enjoyed it. I bought it on Steam a while back for like five bucks and yeah. played through it, and it was fantastic. Oh yeah, definitely worth five bucks. All right, that All right. was uh, Mark's number three, L.A. Noir. My number three is uh, uh, Knights of the Old Republic, another game in that uh, line of games. I just beat the second one, uh, and as rough as the graphics were, God, the stories were so good. The The second one I didn't find as intriguing as the first one. Obviously, everybody knows about the famous twist in the first one, but the second one still had some oh, some just good plot points. And, and, uh, and as far as rough as it looked, it was an Xbox game, so you can imagine it was... Uh, uh, a little rough around the edges. I yeah. still like the animations and just having a lightsaber and uh, it, it's like Dungeons and Dragons meets Star Wars. Uh, what, what else can you do there? They said that the new expansion for uh, the online game mm-hmm. is the next one. It's a very single player focused. What? And they're oh! incorporating oh! it into. Oh! <laughs> like they're it's... incorporating it into uh, into the online game. But I thought that was the Old Republic and not Knights of the Old Republic. But it's like going to be nice. They're to the essentially Republic. saying it's Kotor the next game. Yeah, I gotta play. I that saw game. an article that said your that said that. choice is wrong. No, I didn't know I'd that. Still, I still wouldn't consider it wrong necessarily. Whatever you guys say, uh, my things are wrong. Damn it, JJ. not wrong. I'm gonna have to play that game again now. I've been wanting to, to hop into it again for a while because I, I absolutely I got to uh, to max level and I love the story in that game. I did too. Great. That was my. I was actually thinking about replaying the story. Now that you told me that, I think it's I think it's official. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> I think it's official. Dang it. Well, my number three may have been invalid, but I just realized I don't that think I... It's, I don't think it's invalid, because okay. I still, even though it's they're incorporating this online game, and we don't even know how much they're incorporating, they just said, like, it's going to have a really, really single-player focused story experience. Awesome. Um, which, you know, the base game was, too. Yeah, yeah. It was very uh, single-player, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but still, solid pick, because yep. KOTOR is fantastic. Oh, yeah. It really is. Uh, being the second one was a real, like, stoked my love of that, that series again. I, I was like, oh, sh-. as soon as I beat it, I was like, oh, I have Xenoblade Chronicles, but do I want to start just downloading the Old Republic and start a guy? <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> All right. My number two is Suikoden, but 
it appears to later on somebody else's list, so we'll get to it then. Oh, whose list could it be? I'm guessing maybe Isaac's. Yeah. My <laughs> number two is Shogo Mobile Armor Division. And I I don't think either one of these guys have even heard of the game. I have. Um, oh. It came on a tube two, two, a pack. two pack with Septera Core. Septera My brother That's had right. it on the computer a long time nice. ago. Yep. Uh, yeah, the, I I got this game. It was, it was at. Uh, Is that like the Frogger two pack you got? His it's, was, it was actually really cool. It yeah. was. I, I I'm guessing he got it at Target. Yes. It was a Target two pack. Ten dollars. Ten dollars for both of these games. You also thought the Burger King games were good. The Burger King no, games no. were funny. Uh, if you if you had my brother in this room right now, he'd be like, "Yeah, Septeracore and Shogo." I remember he liked yeah. both of those games. Uh, Shogo <laughs> was uh, one of two games that was like basically, if you took the plot of a really popular anime and just forced that forced to be a game, <laughs> which is what happened with Oni as well, and that should have been an honorable mention. I forgot until just now. That's all right. Uh, Shogo Mobile Armor Division is a FPS game where. I think it's like on Mars or something. It's on a planet and there's a revolution starting and you are like part of the military and you drive around, you walk around in a giant mech. You're awesome. I can't go wrong there. But then eventually you like realize maybe you need to change sides and you have that little twist, the classic twist that a lot of games have. Yeah, but I, I, I do. <laughs> I'm destroying the studio right now. <laughs> yeah, the studio is falling apart. Now I don't remember where I don't remember where he got the two pack, but I do remember the Septera Core and the um, Shogo two pack. It was like yeah. a little like a little interchangeable case that you could just open one side and right. Yeah, it was it was a very cool game because you have these massive. Well, <laughs> for I'd the probably, time, I probably go back and play it and disagree. But, but for the time, what felt like massive cityscape environments where yeah. you could go around in your mech and fight people on foot and in other mechs and you could also get out and explore in more detail at the same time. Yep. And uh it was awesome and imagine what just like I said with uh Mega Man Legends, imagine what modern hardware could do with that kind of a game. It's called Xenoblade Chronicles. <laughs> I was just thinking that. But no. All right. Xenoblade Chronicles isn't the same. Brian number 2. All right, uh, my number two is Mega Man proper, um, not necessarily Mega Man Legends. Um, a actual pick your boss, go to the stage, side scroll, fun in really, really beautiful either artistic graphics or modern day like do some really cool things on screen type uh, type Mega Man game. Mega Man Legends? No, I, I I want a proper Mega Man. Just you know, kind of like how uh, Mighty Number no. Nine. You know, is but in a Mega Man style where it's stage. You pick your stage, go to your stage. You know, do that. Uh, put it on Kickstarter. I'll fund it. All right, come on, Capcom. Mighty Number Nine. It's not Mega Man. <laughs> it's made by the same guy. Yeah, but it's just not Mega Man. Okay, JJ, I like your number one. I do like your number Me one. Me too. My number one is Xeno Gears slash Xeno Saga. No, I do not consider them to be in the same vein as Xenoblade Chronicles. Why? Because Xenoblade Chronicles is literally connected to them only in name. I think I mentioned this before, but when Xenoblade Chronicles came out, it was originally going to be called Monado, the beginning of the world. Yeah. Right. Because it's about this sword called the Monado. And the beginning of the world. They literally, the conversation was just, hey, instead of calling it that, why don't we, since we're the same team that worked on the Xeno series back in the day... Why don't we change the name to Xenoblade Chronicles as kind of a nod to that? That's it. That's right. literally the tie-in. Yep. That's it. Xenogears and Xenosaga have actual, if you want to believe it, connections to each other. I, I, I genuinely believe they do because there's, especially there's a cameo in Xenosaga that refers back to Xenogears. But the, there's just really, that level of comp- complexity is so rare in games nowadays, like n- nowadays, they're they're complex games. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. It, maybe it was just be, this could be totally again with me nostalgia coming back. But that game just really showed me how complex a game could be. Those games back then, if you were to update them to today, you would have just a freaking masterpiece. No. Granted, you would want to finish the second disc. Yes, uh, <laughs> please, please finish the second disc this time. But, I mean, I mean, just the, the potential mm. for what they could do with that and to be able to continue the story. Because initially the story was going to be like 16 parts long or something. So it's absolutely insane yeah. that the, the stuff that they're leaving out and the stuff that they, they could go back to and, and refer to. And I hate that they, you know, weren't weren't able to, to continue with that. It's just, it's unfair. I will say X, Xenoblade Chronicles X, 
feels a lot closer to those. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Um, especially m- mainly because there's freaking mechs actually, yeah. but even even just the the uh, the amount of things you can do and the amount of like different side stories there are that you can explore and go to, yep. and especially when you beat the game, uh, the ending you'll kind of you'll you're gonna kind of be like, oh crap, nice. There could be way more here. <laughs> Holy crap! Uh, I love it. Um, cause it's, there, there's a lot of questions at the end. I'll just put it that way after the credits roll, especially. Uh, but yeah, I would love to see another actual Xeno, uh, Gears or Xeno Saga game. Nice. Yeah. My number one. I, I can get on board with that. My number one, which was also JJ's number two is Suikoden. Yep. Brian, what's your number one? Why? <laughs> That was a joke. Oh. My, because we've you. talked about Sweet Coden so much on the show. I will say, like, I'm putting this on here because I do love this series so much. Yeah. From what I've played. <laughs> Honestly, you could almost call me out on this. Uh, simply because I have not played four or five. So for me, yeah, well, there are actually two games that's true. that I could play in it. So yeah. but at the same at the same token, knowing that we have a very small chance of ever seeing a new one. Mm-hmm. Is uh, is you know it's a little disheartening. It is, and especially with the way they ended the series, because you've got the flash, well, the prequel essentially in Sweet Code and Four, and they follow that up with Sweet Code and Five, which also takes place like at least a hundred years before the first game. And there's so much stuff building up with the Holy Kingdom of Harmonia, right? That is completely unresolved, and the Howling Moon Guild and. I just wish we could have more and understand what was going on there because it was really building towards something and then they felt like they wanted to just go to like an isolated new area with no history yeah. so they could do their own thing since it wasn't the same story. Right. Uh, not showrunner, uh, but like main designer in those last two games. Yeah. Gotcha. I want more. I want the uh, sense of, I don't know. It's the firefly of video games. N- not really. <laughs> Is it had four solid That's games true. in the series and one it's annoying like, one? It'd be if Game of Thrones just stopped. Yeah, yeah. It, it had a good run. Uh, yeah, it had a really good run. But I wish there was more. Yeah. Yep. All right, Brian, number uh, one, and then stand on that JRPG train. I want to see a modern day graphics galore Legend of Dragoon. I mean, I don't even care if the story is even that good. Just give me some really sweet looking. Uh, JRPG characters in those awesome dragon Power Ranger suits. Holy moly. Yeah. I mean, that game... Something is... better than a point-and-click world map, though. Yes. Well, I mean, just do, <laughs> do an open world. Do a completely open world like all the games are going to now. But have me give me the power to absorb a dragon essence and then become a Power Ranger of dragons. That was awesome. That game... when I that The, the thing that sold me on that game was seeing the, uh, the, the trailer where um, he turns into that green... Uh, you know, he gets the green suit with the wings, and he does the move, and I'm just like, "That's all I need." Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. It's very stylish, and I love it. I, I, when I was a kid, I had a friend over, and we played it for like five or six hours. One, oh, wow. when we he spent the night, yeah. and I, I do, I, I love the like, just the suit and the power. And it just is cool. It's exactly. It's just cool. Just like, like in a teen male power fantasy way. It's it's kind of cool. Yeah. So I mean, g- give me a modern graphic Legend of Dragoon, and I'm I'm a happy boy. It's one. It's another one of those games where a lot of people haven't played it, but those that have really, really like it. Yeah. So I mean, I could probably play it again and be like, "Oh, this wasn't as good as I remembered," but dang it, eh. Hey, <laughs> I love those damn Power Ranger dragons. Yeah. And then when you got the the ultimate one at the end, and you're like just blasting Melbu Fubanan. Melba <laughs> Melba Toast Bandana. It's actually his name was Melbu Frama, but. My my friend always pronounced that Melbu Fubanan. Nice. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Our top five wishful thinking games. I would love to see some of these Please. come back. I want all this. of them to come back. It, it always sucks, like because you know one of the biggest issues for these things is like who has the rights and who's able to make stuff. Because there's plenty of games out there that people would love to get their hands on, be able to continue yep. the story, continue the gameplay, all that stuff, but they can't because of legal reasons. And I mean. While I understand it, it's still unfortunate because yeah. you're essentially limiting you know, the potential for something really, really great. Right. So. I agree. And I understand, like you were just saying, I, I understand why a lot of these games won't come back. But why, 
why won't Mega Man? What Mega Man seems like yeah. a huge cash cow. Capcom, still. Yeah. what why? is happening at Capcom? It's like it's like Nintendo. Like ah, we're just gonna discontinue Mario. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. <laughs> why what would you like. do that? Yeah, honestly, that's a really good comparison. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. you think Capcom, you think Mega Man. That's exactly yep, right. Sure. It's not like a. It's not like it doesn't sell well. So there's no business reason for like Legend of Dragoon. Probably Sony. It's Sony still owns the rights to yeah. that, but they probably are like, eh, it didn't sell very well, and it doesn't have name brand recognition. That's all business is going to now. Xenoblade Chronicles being yeah. one. You know, like well, let's put Xenoblade on it because you know they, people recognize that. You know, it's not, but Mega Man doesn't make any sense. It's got great brand recognition. It sells well. Yep. Capcom, what are you doing? I mean, you could make, you could just churn out a cheap uh, 2D one and it would sell perfectly well for how much it costs to make. Yeah. Or you could make a AAA title and everyone would buy it. Right. And look at at Dragon Ball Z games. I think a lot of people would prefer a 2D. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I think that's all the time we got. So uh, that would be it for episode number 79. I will say our next episode, episode 80, is going to be very different from what we've done in the past. Uh, we're actually going to be doing some restructuring on the show. Um, not like a huge total major overhaul, but we are actually going to be implementing some new ideas and, and, and some new things that we've kind of been been talking about behind the scenes. Uh, those of you that, that follow on Twitch, I've been talking about it a little bit on there and uh, and and. Also, I really want to want to thank everybody. I actually got a ton of feedback on the last episode that I did solo, um, saying that that it sounded really well and went really well. And I was like really surprised because honestly, as much like I was like, I really just want people to send in side quests so I don't have to try and do, <laughs> do this stuff. But people were saying that that it went over really well, so I really really want to want to thank everybody and, and say that I appreciate that. Uh, but uh, next episode, we will definitely go over some details. On uh, on how the show is going to be structured, you know, in the future. Don't worry, it's not going to be like like I said, not anything any huge or major. I think we're just going to be adding more and trying to get more people involved. Uh, so you'll 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 see what all that is. We'll explain everything on the next episode, and uh, we'll go from there. Anybody have anything else? Uh, watch JJ stream when he streams. It's fun. Yeah. Don't watch me when I stream. No, what Mark too. <laughs> Mark no, don't watch Witcher. Me. He did a really good job. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you want if you want to watch me like tinker with the program that streams for half an hour. We honestly like we, we have a pretty good time when we stream in there. Where there's usually yeah. usually a handful of people that we have in there. And we're just we talk about games. Yeah, I love that you just sit there and you'll reminisce about like times you played or my my, my favorite thing about what JJ does is he's playing a, a, a Final Fantasy VII right now. And he talks about, like, remembering this part and, like, compare it. And it's just really cool to kind of get the insights of somebody else's experience with a game that you, we've all played. So it's I, I enjoy it. I, I play a game. We play games together separately. Yeah. Fired up. Play something else. And yeah. Let's just chat. Yeah. Good times. Chat, chat, chat. All right. With that, this is the Frozen North signing off for episode number 79. My name is JJ. My name is Mark. My name is Brian. And as always, keep on gaming. That was not weird at all. (laughs) Gaming! Our theme song was made available through the Creative Commons Attribution License by Ziphoid. The song title is Radical Fanfare.